إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله As we all know the entire world is now being impacted by a global pandemic and subhanallah it's unbelievable how things are changing quickly in a matter of days last week the situation wasn't the same yesterday the situation wasn't the same and subhanallah the shift gets us thinking like yesterday a few days ago people would the humanity the human being would think of himself as that powerful human being the person who has got control of everything the person who has got everything figured out who, who can do everything and look today today we're locking down countries and cities closing airports no one is moving between cities countries businesses are shut down people are dying and we are unable to stop that in some severe situations people are afraid that they don't find food in the supermarket so they would pile and get and panic and get a lot of food to store it subhanallah how weak the human being is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran حتى إذا أخذت الأرض زغرفها وزينت وظن أهلها أنهم قادرون عليها when the earth has taken its adornment and it's beautified and the people of earth thought that they are capable of it they have figured it out أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا فجعلناها حصيدا كأن لم تغنى بالأمس our order would come our command would come day or night we would make it as if it is hasidan, as if it is harvest, as it, has, as it hasn't been fruitful yesterday. كَأَلَّمْ تَغْنَ بِالْأَمْسِ كَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ We are making the, the, the signs clear and detailed for those who would give thought, for those who would ponder and think. My brothers and sisters, today I want to make the ruling I want to compromise the entire ruling of Islam on how we should deal with, this, with similar situations. When virus struck the world, when there is a pandemic, global pandemic, how Islam asks us to deal. And I will make it full. I will talk about some minor cases which we might be in now and extreme cases which we're not there and I hope we never go there, but some countries have been there. And I will discuss all the situations and how Islam tell us to deal in different situations. Number one, I want to remind you that one of the pillars of Iman is to believe in Al-Qadr, in the decree, in the destiny of Allah Azza wa Jal. The good decree and the bad decree. We believe that ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها إن ذلك على الله يسير. Nothing happened in this universe or in ourselves except that Allah Azza wa Jal has written and decree and know about in a book before it was all created this is simple and easy for Allah Azza wa Jal so we believe in Qadr in whatever Allah has decreed in whatever Allah has made upon us whether it's good or bad but people will be affected people already are affected and people will be affected whether it's by loss of life loss of beloved ones disease hardship financial problems whatever people are impacted and we need to remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, Wonders are the affair of a believer. Everything happens is good for him. And this is for no one except the believer. If something good happens his way, he is thankful. And that's better for him. And if something bad happens his way, he is patient. Sabar. And this is better for him. So we need to be patient when it's difficult, we need to be thankful when it's easy. And besides accepting the decree, as Muslims, we have to take all the necessary precautions. Everything that can protect our life and the life of others, we have to take it. As a Muslim, you have to take all the precautions. Failing to do that is failing to commit to being a good Muslim. So what does Islam say about the spread of Similar disease. What did Islam say? The Prophet ﷺ says, when you hear that this disease, a spreading disease, is happening in a city, do not enter it. 
locked down. Cities that have the infection are locked down. Imagine if we had done this in the very beginning. One city infected, blocked down, no one comes in, no one comes out. Then the worst case scenario is no one outside will be impacted. Islamic ruling, when this happens, lock down the city. No one goes in. What if it happens in my city? I am in the city. Can I leave? No, you can't. No, you can't. Even if you don't have the disease, don't leave. You stay. You may say, but the disease haven't arrived in Cook Islands, not in Fiji. I can just go there and be safe. No, you can't. If we allow people to go to places which are safe now, some of them will have the disease and it will no longer be safe. For the big purpose of humanity, of people, we should lock down cities that are impacted. That's the ruling of Allah 1400 years ago. Second, it happened in our city. It happened in our country. What should we do? The Prophet says, لا يورد ممرد على مصح. A person who is infected, do not visit a person who is healthy. Quarantine. The person who is infected is completely quarantined to avoid the spread of this disease within our community, within the city. And take all the necessary measures. Follow the local health authorities on what can be done. What can we do to prevent this from happening? Wash your hands regularly. Avoid handshakes. Make the social distancing. Whatever they tell us we should do, take care of it. Protect yourself and other people. This is the life, the soul that Allah Azza wa Jal has entrusted us with. We have the responsibility of maintaining our health. Yes, we, have, we rely on Allah. True, nothing would hurt us except what Allah has told us. But look at the Prophet in the Hijrah, when he was going from Mecca to Medina, he didn't just say, I will go straight path. No, he took all the precautions, all the measures, with the dunya standards, to protect himself and the people. And in the Masajid, make a, because it's a place of gathering, make special measures. Avoid completely handshakes, avoid getting close to a person and while doing sujood, try to have some napkin in front of your face so because these are surfaces that the disease can stay on. Try to take all the measures that you can to prevent yourself from carrying the disease. And another very important point a lot of people ignore is if you are young, if you are fit, if you are healthy, then chances are you are right. You wouldn't be impacted, you wouldn't die out of the disease. But chances are, when the, when the disease spread in the community, God forbid, you will be carrying the disease without being affected, without showing symptoms, but you can transmit it to elderly. You can transmit it to seniors. People who are old in age have less, less immunity, and you can cause calamity, severe calamity. People dying, families dying, communities dying, countries locked down because you were careless. You didn't take the needed measures. Because he said, I'm healthy, I will still be alive. Let's cough anywhere, sneeze anywhere. Yes, you don't show the symptoms, but you may be carrying it. You may be spreading the disease elsewhere. And remember, Allah Azza wa Jal says about protecting others. You know, if you have caused someone to pick up the disease from you, and he ended up dying, it's as if you have killed him. As if you have killed him. Yes, you don't know him, but you have killed him. What is the difference? What is the, the proof? The Prophet says, If you give the eye of jealousy, of envy to someone and he ended up making an accident and dying, it's as if you have killed him with your sword. Exactly the same. So similarly, you should prevent yourself from hurting others, from causing calamities to others. Take extra measures to protect your cough, your sneeze, all of the things to protect the life that Allah has made sacred. One day the Prophet ﷺ was doing tawaf around the Kaaba and he was looking at the Kaaba and saying Ma atyabuk wa atyabu How beautiful you are and how beautiful the scent, the smell of you, ya Kaaba. And then he would say Ma a'adhamuki wa a'adhamu hurmatik How great you are and how great, how greatly sacred you are. And then he says Walladhi nafsu Muhammadin biyadih I swear by Allah who has created me. The sacredness of the soul of a believer is more sacred in the, in the sight of Allah Azza wa than you, Kaaba. Protecting the human being, the believer's life, is more important than the Kaaba. 
The Prophet says, and tuhdam al Kaaba hajar hajar. When the Kaaba is being destroyed, one stone after the other. The second, ahwan عند Allah is more easy in front of Allah than killing a believer. Lazawal al dunya, the extension of the entire universe, the entire humanity, the entire world. Ahwan عند Allah min qatl mu'min bi haqq is easier in the sight of Allah than spreading the blood of a believer without right. So we said we should take, we have decree in Allah, we believe in the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we take the precautions to protect ourselves and protect the community. Even if we don't show symptoms and we won't show symptoms, we will take extra measures not to infect anyone. Then we don't entirely rely on the measures. We rely on Allah Azza wa Jal. On Musabib al Azbab, the one who creates Al Azbab. We should get back to Allah and get back to Adkar, to the remembrance of Allah, and maintain that from now on we have to strictly say Adkar al Sabah and Adkar al Masa. We should say, I'll be kalimati lahi tam mati min sharri ma khalaq. I'll seek refuge with the perfect words of Allah from the evil of what He has created. بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم in the name of Allah whose name there is protection against every kind of harm in the earth and in the heavens and he is the all hearing all knowing hold on to adkar this is making dua this is asking Allah to protect us and one very important point since we did all the measures and we rely on Allah we put everything on Allah how is it logical that we panic? We shouldn't panic, right? We've done all the measures. We've done all that we can. There is no point in panicking. And part of being panicking is spreading rumors. You hear a piece of news, you spread it everywhere. Something happened, you hear it from someone and you're spreading it. And this is considered a lie in itself. The Prophet says, كَفَى بِالْمَرْءِ كَذِبًا أَنْ يُحَدِّثْ بِكُلِّ مَا سَمِعَ It's enough. It's a big lie already when you tell everything that you've been told. So hold on, just share from authentic sources. One of the sides of panicking as well is extra buying, when you buy more than you need. And the rule of thumb, the general case here, is that as Muslims, we shouldn't buy more than we need. We should only in general cases buy what we need. Don't overstock things, especially in this situation. Because in this situation, we know that other people would panic. Other people would be stocking everything in the stock and leaving few things in the, in, the, in the markets. When you go and take more than you need, then you are causing difficulty for those people who live around you. You are causing pain and difficulty to your neighbors. And that's not a sign of a good Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ says, Ma amana li. He hasn't believed in me. The one, Man bata shab'an, the person who has who was sleeping full stomach and he knows that his neighbor next by is hungry that's what you do when you stock the 10 people stock in your house people will get hungry so this is something a good muslim wouldn't do a friend of mine was saying to his to his wife we wouldn't go shopping we'll just wait until people take whatever they want and we'll go later and see what is remaining and take from it. I can live on the little things remaining. That's a beautiful example of a good Muslim, of what Islam teaches us, how we should be good towards our neighbors. The next point is difficult. I just want to mention it to cover the entire thing end to end. Alhamdulillah, we're not there yet. God forbid, we, well, I hope we never go there. But in some countries, they are facing the situation where they have death, people dying from the disease. And the problem is, doctors say the body of the diseased person is still infected. How do we deal with the situation? How do we do the normal ghusl and kafan and everything when the body is infected? In fact, one thing to remember is that the family of the person infected are quarantined. And he himself is quarantined. So they don't see one another. So just imagine and keep knowing that the person dying he doesn't see his family. The family is deprived of seeing their person, their, their, their beloved person. Even after they die, they are still quarantined. They don't get to do the ghusl or attend the janazah. So it's very difficult for them. We have to show special care for the families that are impacted. God forbid, I hope no one gets impacted. But we should know that if someone gets impacted, 
it will be severely difficult for him to not see their beloved ones in the last days and not attending the Janazah. So what are the measures that we have to do? Because Islam, there are four important things, rights, for the diseased person. Number one is al-ghusl, washing the body. This is an obligation. It's the right of the body, of the person who died, to be washed. And Islamically, we know the Imam would know how to do proper ghusl. But in, the, in these circumstances, if it's very difficult to do, like properly, the doctor should be wearing everything necessary to protect himself while doing the ghusl. But if we can't do that, then at least just spreading some water from far away, that would suffice. That would be enough for ghusl. What if we're completely not able to do ghusl? It's impossible. Numbers are big. We don't have enough people who, are, who know how to do it. Then saqatat. It's all right. We don't do it. It's fine. وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ The deen is not there to make us our lives difficult. Fine. Then comes the second thing, which is al-kafan. Coffin. Putting the body in this white cloth. We should tell the authorities from earlier on that this is how we bury, this is how we cover our bodies. So we should tell them beforehand that if it is possible to do it before and then because they want to put the body in a bag, sealed bag and cover it due to the infection. So we should tell them that if you can coffin it first. If not, then also saqat it. It's fine. The third thing is the burial. The burial doesn't have to be in the same place of the janazah. If the authorities want to do the burial separately, it's fine. We can pray the janazah here without the body. And then the last one is the prayer and the prayer when the family exit the quarantine, they can do the prayer separately. It's fine. As the Prophet ﷺ did it before, he did the prayer on the lady who was used to survive the masjid later after she died, after she passed away. Again, I don't want to scare anyone. I'm just saying the entire Islamic ruling around the situation. God forbid, I hope this never happens to us. There is a question arising. What happened to the masjid? Should we close the masjid? Should we stay open? Should we go to the masjid? Should we not go? And in the time being in New Zealand, Alhamdulillah, things are under control. Alhamdulillah, we're still able to have our open masjid. Alhamdulillah, we still have universities open, workplaces open. In some situations for other countries or other places, it, this may be difficult. It may be the right situation to do is to lock down the masjid. We'll have to pray zuhur at home for raqqa. And if a small group of even three people can gather in a park and just do the Jum'ah together, that would also be Jum'ah to raqqa. Fine. Allah Azza says, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ what we should do is not ask when do we flee from Allah, but when do we flee to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah, in this particular situation, this is the time to go back to Allah and come nearer and ask Allah to ease this situation. Allah says, and we have already sent messengers to nations before you, O Muhammad. Then we seized them with poverty and hardship. So they might humble themselves in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. My brothers and sisters, this is the time to humble ourselves in front of Allah. This is the time to return to Allah. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal. The same way Ibrahim made the dua. رَبَّ جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ Oh my Lord, make this country a peaceful country and provide its people a fruitful sustenance. اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلي اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وقم الصلاة